My name's Graham Pizzi, and I'm a naturalist. I study and photograph wildlife, particularly bird life. These are white or sacred ibis feeding their young. I've photographed them many times. I live and work in an area which is particularly well suited to my interests, Western Port Bay on the southern coast of Victoria, about 80 kilometres from Melbourne. An excellent place to study the relationship between living things and their environment. In the early 1970s, a detailed environmental study was started in the Western Port area. The aim is to gain an understanding of the life of the bay before it is further disturbed by human intrusion, especially by industrial development. Western Port Bay is in many ways an environmental test case, and a great deal of interest has been focused on it. I'm the warden of a property called Coolart, which has a history going back to the early days of the settlement of this region. Coolart was recently acquired by the state government in recognition of its historical importance and because it's become a valuable bird sanctuary providing people with a rare opportunity to see birds in their natural surroundings. Coolart has a magnificent man-made lagoon which supports a large population of white ibis and many other species of water birds. We've built a hide which lets people watch the birds without disturbing them. It's long been one of my concerns that Australians don't know enough about their wildlife. Mostly because they don't have the opportunity to get to know it on everyday terms. Maybe we can help it along in places like Coolart, uh, close to cities where people don't have to travel for days to get to, uh, places that are rich in wildlife that have a number of habitats uh, grouped close closely together as this place does and uh, if we can bring people and wildlife together uh, by using techniques like uh, our bird hide here which is our first and uh, certainly not our last because we think it works pretty well we can have large numbers of people and I mean thousands of people a year coming to these locations and seeing wildlife out these viewing windows uh, behaving as it always does uh, when people aren't present. And I believe uh, quite firmly that if you can show people this, if you can uh, excite them with the colour and the form and the, the movement of these things and their complete naturalness and apparent freedom, uh, you've gone a long way to making people um, more literate in the background of, of their own continent, their own natural world. Uh, you help make them feel part of it. In Western Port Bay, you can see great numbers of many different birds. The whole of Western Port Bay and the land around it can be considered as an ecosystem with a unique character of its own, arising out of the physical structure of the bay. This is the eastern mouth of the bay. There are two quite narrow entrances, and then in the middle of the bay, filling much of its area, are these two large islands, Phillip Island and French Island. One of the effects of these islands is to reduce the energy of the waves from the ocean. 
Water circulates slowly, letting sediments settle into great sheets of mudflats. These provide a habitat for fish and crustaceans and fertile soil for sea grasses and other marine vegetation. Sea grasses form 80% of the primary plant production in the bay. Acting rather like pastures on land, they trap solar energy and pass it on through a complex food chain. The sea grasses are descended from land plants. They flower and produce pollen, but remarkably the whole process occurs in the sea. The abundance of seagrass is apparent all around the bay. You see tons of it washed up on the beaches. Some creatures, like the thousands of black swans that inhabit the bay, graze directly on the seagrass. but its primary importance is to the marine life. Crabs and other creatures feed on it, and as the seagrass dies and breaks up, it is attacked by bacteria which convert it into nutrients which can be taken up by other organisms. These include microscopic plankton, which are consumed by larger creatures. The decaying seagrass starts a food chain, which eventually produces the myriad marine life of the bay. Man is often the end of the food chain. Western Port Bay supports a professional fishing industry and is also very popular for weekend fishermen. Fish are also the food source for many birds, though most birds have to work a bit harder for it than these begging pelicans. Activities on the land, like agriculture, affect the life of the bay. This area was once a vast swamp. Now it has been drained to provide farmland. Streams like the Lang Lang River once meandered into the swamp. Now they run straight to the sea and they've been severely eroded. 